Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. Today's episode of the Tourpreneur podcast is kindly sponsored by Checkfront, the booking platform trusted by over 5,000 tour and activity operators around the world. This month, Checkfront is offering an exclusive 90-day free trial for tourpreneurs. Find out more at checkfront.com forward slash tourpreneur. Welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow tourpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. And welcome back to the 30-day Things to Do Challenge for Tour Operators. We are already on day seven. Welcome back to Tourpreneur, Kyla Steves. How are you, Kyla? I'm great. Okay, so yesterday you worked on putting your brand out there on Instagram. Now today it's time to tune up all of your social media profiles for the 30-day Things to Do Challenge. Like I mentioned in yesterday's challenge, we can get so caught up in posting all the time on these platforms that we forget to make sure everything else is up to date or looking good. And usually what happens is when we first create an account, we go through the profile section as quickly as possible because we just want to get it up and running. So we write a haphazard bio and then never come back to make it better. But the thing is, many guests will check your social profiles before making a booking. Yes, they likely do this to see your photos and videos to get an idea of what the experience is going to be like. But there's a chance to also look at your bios. And just like your website, your social media profiles should be professional and enticing. You have nine elements of a successful profile. So really good information here. And I think what's important is to keep it updated, isn't it? Because if someone does land on your Facebook page or your Instagram profile and you've not updated it in months, it doesn't look good for your business, does it? Not at all. And your bio is really an opportunity to highlight your unique selling proposition. Like what makes you different? Why should that guest go with your company? Are you TripAdvisor's number one whale watching tour? Does your tour get exclusive access to hidden gems that nobody else does? You want to put that there and you also want to really highlight what you offer, like what kind of tours and activities you offer so that people know right away when they see your profile. And there are different things that you can do to enhance each of your profiles. You can add your address. You on Instagram, you can add story highlights using an on-brand icon. Um, There are just plenty of things, but like one of the best things you can do on your Facebook is add a book now button. Whenever there's an opportunity to have a call to action, take it. So it's really easy to set up a book now button. You can find it in the email we send you as your daily reminder. That is a very essential element. Yeah. And something else I wanted to ask you, and I, and I know you're a marketing expert, content marketing. So I keep reading with, with a Facebook profile that you shouldn't put a link in the post. Again, kind of similar to the question I asked you about Instagram, um, that you should put the link to whatever you're linking, wanting to link to in the comment rather than the initial post. Do you know anything about that? I've actually never heard of that before. I'm not sure why we, you would put a link in the comment, maybe just to... Well, I read that, and, and this is the thing, I think it changes all the time. I read <laughs> that if you put the link in the main post, Facebook doesn't like it because Facebook wants to keep you on Facebook. So if you put the link into your actual, in, in the comment apparently, and again, I haven't measured or tested this, but this is what I've read, your your post will get seen by more of your fans than if you put the link in the post. Well, that's very greedy of Facebook to do that. <laughs> but Yeah, well, 
<laughs> I think they all do it. I, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've heard the same thing for LinkedIn. I've heard the same thing that you'll often see. This is why, because I couldn't understand for a while. I'm like, why aren't they putting the link in the comment and what in, in the actual post rather than the comment? Someone said, oh, you get more reach and engagement if you put the link in the comment. Now, someone can come, you know, we've got a lot of social media and digital marketing experts who are on the Torpreneur group. So maybe somebody can correct me there or say if I'm right, but that that's just something I've always been puzzled about. You know, when it comes to social media marketing, like if you have things, if you get these tips from other sites, the best thing you can do is just test it out. See it for yourself. Yeah. What delivers Absolutely. better results for you. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that. Day seven. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.